Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. Today we're going to be starting a project that will end in a weather application. Our weather application will make use of Open Weather Map, which is an API that allows us to get the weather from cities all around the area that we're in. There is a specific request that we want to make to Open Weather API, and it is called the Cities in a Cycle request. This returns JSON from cities that are laid in a circle based on a center point of a latitude and longitude that we send to this request. And we'll get that latitude and longitude from our device's GPS. So if we're standing in, say, like Washington, D.C., it will ping all of the cities around us, including Washington, D.C., and then give us all of the weather forecasts for those cities. Here's an example of the JSON that we're going to be using for this you can see that we've got a few fields outside of this large list, and then we've got this list, and inside of this list is each of the city's information. So for the first one, we've got Long Island City, and then all the information that accompanies it. And then we've got another city, this one called Queens Bridge Houses. And in this request, I brought in 10 different cities around New York City. The cities themselves have individual fields too. And some of these fields are also objects. So if you look here, we have this chord field, which has both a latitude and longitude. We also have this main object, which has a temperature, pressure, humidity, and a temp min and temp max. This wind object, which has speed, degree, and gust. And even this weather object, which is a list of objects. And you can see here that the list can have multiple objects. So this is in stark contrast to a lot of the JSON APIs that we've dealt with thus far. Here's one of the requests from the cryptocurrency API that we used in the Flux tutorial. You can see that we just get back a bunch of objects. Each one has the same fields as the other ones. So the first one's Bitcoin, then the second one's Ethereum, and so on and so forth. Now, of course, we can actually communicate with the JSON the same way that we were doing it before, but we'll end up writing a lot of boilerplate as a result of this. Because we have so many nested objects in this this request, it's actually easier for us to make use of a library that allows us to generate all of that boilerplate. Also, coincidentally, it's faster because we don't have to use mirrors or reflection. So the libraries that we're going to be focusing on today are the JSON annotation library, the build runner library, and the JSON serializable library. Now you'll notice here that the only one that's in our direct dependencies is this JSON annotation library. The other two are used to generate the code. And then once we've generated this code, we do not need them inside of our actual Flutter application while it's running on the device. So JSON annotation gives us these annotations that we can put above our objects, which tells JSON serializable that it can serialize those objects. And then we can use the build runner to actually generate the code. The current versions for JSON serializable and JSON annotation are 0.5 for serializable and 0.2.3 for annotation. And then our build runner is at 0.8.0. .0. All right, so let's get started. There's just a little bit of boilerplate in our main application. You can see here we've got a stateless widget, which creates a material app. And then this points towards a stateful widget, which creates an empty scaffold. We're not going to be really worrying about the front end today because we'll be building that out in later tutorials. Let's create a new folder called JSON. Inside of this JSON folder, we'll create a new file called response.dart. This file response.dart is where we're going to create all of the objects that we're going to use to serialize our JSON response. For this file, we only need to make one single import, and that's for JSON annotation backslash JSON annotation dot dart so that we can gain access to the annotations that we need to generate the code that we're going to want. I'm just going to put the JSON side by side with the code that we're writing so you can see how the objects look and relate to the JSON request. You can see here that we can annotate our base response class with this annotation that says JSON serializable. If I hover over the JSON serializable annotation, you can see that there are various different fields that are automatically set inside of it. And if we wanted some of them to be different, we could actually come in and manually set them as well. 
So it will create a factory for us. And this is a factory that will allow us to take a piece of JSON and then convert it into our object. It also creates a to JSON method, which will allow us to convert from an object to JSON. We probably won't use this in our application, but you never know. We also have the ability to check if it's nullable and include if it's null as well. And all of these are true by default. Here's what our base response looks like. We've got our message field and we've got this COD field. Both of these are strings and we've got the count field, which is an int and below it, we have our list of objects. So this will be a list of city type and we'll call this cities. Now the key for the JSON is actually called list. So we need to further annotate this so that it knows that the actual key for this JSON value is not the same as what we're putting in here. We can do this by adding a JSON annotator called JSON key. And in here we can put in the name for the key, which in this case is just list. So this will then make it so that when we serialize this list of city into or from JSON, it uses this list key rather than the name, which is cities. And for the other ones that we're not annotating with this JSON key annotation, it's just going to use the name of the variable. You'll also notice that we're extending the base object class with all these classes. We're doing this so that the serialization works properly. By extending objects, we make sure that we have the to string and the hash method. And when we actually add in the mixins, which is what the generated code will give us, it'll let things work a little bit more smoothly. For our city class, we also want to extend object and add in the JSON serializable annotation. Our city class will look a little bit something like this. So we have our ID, which is an integer. Then we have the name, which is a string. Then we have our first object, which is our coordinate, and we'll create an object called chord. Then we have a main object. We have our DT, which is the time that this measurement was made. And this is in an integer format. Then we have our wind object. And after that, we would have our sys object, but I'm not going to include that. I'm not going to include snow, but we've got rain and clouds. And then we have our list of weather. And you can see here, here's the actual brackets to signify that this is a list. Now in this case, I used all of the JSON keys as our variable names, so I don't have to specify the JSON key explicitly for any of these. Now we can set up all of the objects that we have. So we have our chord object, our main object, our wind object, our rain object, our clouds object, and our weather object. We can actually create constructors for both base response and for city. And then we can run our generator to see what the current JSON will look like. So here are our two constructors for base response. We just put in everything and we do the same for city. And now we can open up our command line. And in here we can run flutter package pub, which gets us to the dart pub package manager. And then in here we want to run run and then build runner. And then we're going to run watch. And what this will do is it will watch all of our files inside of this project. And when it finds a file that it can generate code for, it will automatically generate that code. And you can see that we actually do get an error. And it says could not generate from JSON code because the final list of cities type city is not serializable. And then it will output the generated file. And currently our generated file, it's called response.g.dart. And inside of it, there's really nothing except for a comment with the error that popped up inside of our command line. So the error is coming from the fact that we do not have a factory constructor for each of our objects. The factory constructor is what calls the from JSON method and what makes it work. So for base response, we create this factory constructor and we say base response dot from JSON. And then we can pass in a map of string and dynamic as our JSON. And then what this will do is it will call one of the classes that we're generating, which will then of course convert the JSON into our object. And all we really need to do is just specify that we want this at the bottom of each of our classes. So for base response, we just kind of put it in like this. And then for city, we do the same thing and we can do it for all of our other objects as 
well. So in here you can see I've put in the factory constructors for all of our objects, even the empty ones. And now you can see we're getting an error that says unsupported operation. The class cord has no default constructor. So here I've put in all of the constructors just as empty constructors. And now if we look inside of our response.g.dart file, you can see there's all this generated code. So we have a base response from JSON method here which will take in a map with string and dynamic and return a base response. And you can see there's quite a bit of boilerplate written in here to help us generate these objects from our JSON. We even have this abstract class with the mixin that we're going to add to our base response object. And we even have all this stuff for city and for all of the other classes as well. Now you'll notice that there are some errors here. And the way we can get rid of the errors inside of our generated file is by adding this part response.g.dart. What this does is it tells the application that both of these files are part of this same module. So all of the functions and classes inside of this generated file act as though they're in our response.dart file. So even though this has an underscore before it, it is still public to all of the stuff inside of this file and vice versa. So if anything that we put with an underscore inside of re response.dart will be accessible by response.g.dart. So you can really just think of these two files as just one file. All right, so now let's build out the rest of our objects. For cord, we have a double lat and a double for longitude. And of course we wanna put these in our constructor. For main, we have a double temperature. We have int for pressure, int for humidity, and then we have this temp min and temp max. These are both using snake case. You can see they use an underscore. Now Dart doesn't really like using snake case. You can do it, but it just doesn't like to do it. Instead, it prefers that you use camel case. So I have put these in as camel case, and then I just specified in the JSON key the snake case name for the key. Our wind class has a double for speed an int for degree, and a double for gust. A rain object has a single field inside of it, and this is a field called 3H, which stands for three hour. So we'll create a variable called three hour, which will be a double. So to get this information, we can come into our documentation here, and you can see here's the rain object, and it says here rain.3H gives us the rain volume for the last three hours. So this is what the field would look like. If we were going to do a snow object as well, it would also need a 3H property. Our final two objects are clouds, which just has an all field, and this is just an integer. It gives us the percentage of cloud cover in that area. And then for our weather, we have an ID, we have a string, which is our main, we have our description, which is the description of the current weather, and then we have the icon, which is just a symbol for the icon of the weather. All right, so now we have all of this set up. You'll notice that our factories are throwing errors, so we need to wire up our objects with our generated files. For each of our factories, we want to come in here and say, Factory base response from JSON calls on the underscore dollar sign base response function with the JSON inside of it. And this will of course get rid of the error for the factory. And then we also want to add our mixins to our classes. And you do this by saying with and then it's underscore dollar sign the name of the class plus serializer mixin. So in this case it'll be underscore dollar sign base response serializer mixin. And for our city, this will be city serializer mixin, with the factory being underscore city from JSON. And then of course for cord, we have cord serializer mixin, and then cord from JSON. And for main, we have main serializer mixin, and then we have main from JSON. Now once you've put in all of this serializer mixin and the from JSON functions, every all of the errors should go away. And now you've made a bunch of objects that you can serialize to and from JSON, and they can interface with the API that you're targeting. Let's take a look at the generated code. You can see it's quite a bit more complicated than the code that we created in the past to interface with some of our APIs. We get all these nice getters for all the properties that we have. And then we've got all of this logic for the from JSON function and we also get a toJSON function. 
And you can also see for the fields that correspond with other objects, they automatically call those other objects. So not only is this handy for generating code in a way that helps us deal with potential errors, it also speeds up our application. So when we call for these responses, we don't have to worry about mirrors or reflection. Instead, we've got straight up serialization. So it's actually a bit faster for these more complicated and nested JSON requests. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.